We see now Rahman up a game against Demos here, right? And I spoke to him before the game briefly as well. He did feel confident going into this, right? He mentioned, oh. you know, uh, he has had a good success against Demos on the ladder, so he felt good here. But we see our next game here, so it will be Rus on the side of Themos against Rahman's Delhi Sultanate. I am court. very happy about this matchup because did you see Rahman's interview where he said, yeah, Rus, Rus is overrated. Rus is overrated. We are on one of the strongest Delhi maps that we have in the map pool overall. And yeah, Delhi against Rus. How are you feeling? I feel like uh, it might be slightly Rus favored in general because it's very hard to break them in feudal. Okay, you're already looking at me like that. Give me your unfiltered thoughts. I think slightly favored for Roos might be an understatement, in my look, opinion. Look, it's the strongest Delhi map. L give them something. It is the strongest Delhi map. You know, look, uh, it is not an impossible matchup, right? Yeah. Uh, especially on this kind of a map. Those sacred sites being, being so mid-map like that. And although the map is quite open, it is still easy to wall in that center around the sacred sites, right? One straight line is all you need, really, to keep those sacred sites secure, which I think would be quite significant um, for Raman to do in this matchup here. But Rus, you know, uh, we've we've known about this for a very long time. Delhi with a feudal prowess, uh, they're very oppressive. It's their best age by far. But the one thing that throws a wrench in their geared plans is, of course, knights, which they themselves don't have access to. But I bet they would. They have access to a pseudo knight in the form of the Gauls Eurader. But you know, we've known about this before long. French, Jean d'Arc, Rus, these kind of civs, uh, Delhi really struggles against in feudal. And, you know, if they struggled against knights, how about the best knight civilization in order to challenge them? Yeah, we are having Thamos here in the sovereign spawn playing the better French. I mean, uh, the best Fred. Is it the best French? Yeah, it is the, the Rus. French. And we've got Ramen in the northern spawn playing the Delhi Sultanate. We just see the classic opening. He did click his tags, so we're fine on that regard. We are watching the little bounty game. Everyone loves and enjoys it. Uh, also, that uh, deer pack on the corner is denied. And if I look at the travel path of the scout, the forward one should also be denied. So he got both of his on the side. That's a good start for Delhi. Yeah, only one scout here from... Ramen's Delhi. No second scout having been made from the TC, but if both those deer packs have been denied, that's already a pretty nice start for Ramen. However, I am slightly worried for him about the sheep situation, right? With three scouts on the field for Temos' Bruce already. If he is effective with his pathing here, uh, he should still be able to get 250 bounty if he spots those wolves and takes them out fast enough, whilst garnering a majority of the sheep here. Uh, but of course, Raman as a result will be ahead one villager due to his start, which you know every little adds up, right? But I would argue that's slightly offset by uh, Demos's bounty if he reaches that 250. After he, you know, and he doesn't greed either. He goes for the Kremlin, and right after that, he realizes he has enough for the wheelbarrow as well. Six on the Kremlin, four on the Tower of Victory on the other side for Raman. So full defensive Kremlin. He's sitting it right next to the stone forward, so it still covers the deer pack. Do you, if you spot this deer pack like that, do you take the time to push it further down towards your Kremlin before you kill it? It's a risky move, right? And uh, it's, uh, it could potentially be something that's worth to do. The problem is like, you're already controlling three scouts at the same time, right? And giving yourself extra micro at the start of the game to push in that deer pack, although you know, in a perfect world, it's something you would love to do. It can be difficult, right? Even for uh, a I must say, I've actually yet to see it, even against very quick, capable players, someone like Marine Lord, of course, or Beastie, Lucifer, on board, uh, those kinds of names. I've, I've yet to see it, but it could be an option, uh, perhaps when uh, Alpha Star makes its move towards A, which four, <laughs> we shall see that uh, being used as well. There's this one deer that always goes to the side, and then you suddenly have an aneurysm, and your opponent wins. Well, let's not go for that. Thamos, he has enough bounty to go for the wheelbarrow here. Didn't need to mine any gold so far. And Ramen is gonna just go for that second scholar, but he's still on the gold. Being attacked on the gold as well. Is he going for three scholars here? Three scholar opening because Rus is gonna bring out two TCs? That is possible, right? Uh, that is something I was wondering about before this game, whether Rus does opt to go for that second town center in this matchup, because they're one of the few civilizations that can actually survive a push from Delhi if they do decide to go for that second town center. One of the reasons for that is, of course, the Kremlin, and not only is it a defensive landmark, but the 
militia that it can call in as well to store the offensive from Delhi is quite significant, but you are right. It is, in fact, going to be a third scholar here from Raman, which I don't hate. Um, I mean, you know, three scholars to instantly capture the three sacred sites, which probably won't be challenged due to no units from Demos being busy instead placing his... Uh, his town center instead uh, could be useful but of course you know mining that gold with three villages feels just a little bit uh, inefficient when you would get that gold for free anyway from the sacred sites right yeah i mean he's already very far behind what you usually see in the delhi timing department hopefully making up for that with the faster sanctity did he cancel sanctity there it is he did cancel sanctity for a moment there Yes, he cancelled it just to get that. Oh, he cancelled it to get yeah. the scholar out. Yeah, yeah never mind. Right. Of course. Uh, opening with the blacksmith and then the production building. I mean, he knows. Famous is going for the second town center. He sees that Kremlin position on the stone. Clo I mean, he does cover the deer. He does cover a little bit of the berries. The gold is also in the general area. But if you see that immediately going up there and you don't scout a stable, yeah, just, just send it. Double blacksmith. This is just a full greed route. It is, in fact, indeed. Triple uh, Scholar here for Raman's side. Wanted to take all those sacred sites ASAP, as well as double blacksmith to get those uh, two upgrades scaling and uh, popping at the same time uh, for free, of course, which is Delhi's uh, most notable bonus here in this uh, in most of their matchups. Uh, archery range opening from Raman is something I'm not I'm not particularly a fan of here. I mean, especially against the uh, 2TC opponent, uh, like Temos is doing now on the Rus, there's so much value to be gained from those Ghazi Raiders, right? Now, potentially, we could see Raman angle for a full infantry composition in this matchup, which is something that has been theorized about recently, specifically in this matchup um, for Delhi, because on a map like this, due to, you know, it's so difficult to uh, afford a tri composition uh, on Delhi side, which is what you need because reality is, uh, sure, initially perhaps you can ignore the presence of knights, but once those numbers add up more and more, the Ghazi just will not be a match anymore, is the reality, even with uh, boosted Tower of Victory arches behind them. But second TC goes up on the day just in front of the Kremlin here. Yeah, Thamos is finishing the TC, timing 7 minute 15. It's slightly late. It's still perfectly fine, right? He overmined a little bit of that stone, and it's also late because he needed to go for that wooden fortress in his wood line because the Kremlin is super forward and he's not buffing any wood cutting whatsoever. Yes, that's right. And this is interesting. I mean, if the second town center from Rus isn't directly protected by the Kremlin, it could be a dangerous spot to find yourself in Azurus because, especially with this double blacksmith, uh, if we see a strong timing being hit here by Raman, accompanied by Ram, although that Kremlin is behind the TC, so the arrow fire will be present there somewhat, it's not like the units guarding the Ram will be directly in danger, right? So I'm a little bit worried about this forward position here for Themos. We'll have to see how significant that becomes later on. But many, many archers in queue here for Raman. We have stable as well. One Ghazi out. Perhaps more on the way quite soon. But there we see it. Siege engineering now in queue for Raman before any of the other melee upgrades. So I think we're going to see Rams and an all-in quite soon. Yeah, this does appear to be an all-in. Um, the thing is, I felt like Raman was going for that extremely fast sacred side play, but Sanctity has already been finished for like 30 seconds because of that third scholar. And he only now moved out, moving towards all three at once, but Thamos has two knights. So he's gonna be being contested on those sacred side. And this is tough, right? This is why the uh, Ghazi Raider opening is something I would have loved to see instead from Raman here, because, you know, instead of those 12 archers, which realistically would not deal with uh, two knights and two horsemen, you would potentially have something in the range of eight Ghazis instead, which suddenly can pack much more of a punch instead, right? And we see that central sacred site denied, and the pre uh, scholar, excuse me, does go down straight away for Raman. No sacred site capture on the center. We're back on familiar territory. We only have two scholars out. Yeah, and then, you know, this, uh, this multiple skull opening might not work in favor of Raman now. Reinforcements just getting harassed here by Themos. Ghazi just barely survives, and every single unit, especially an expensive one like Ghazi, matters, uh, uh, as we know, of course, in these games. So saving that is useful, and certainly something he uh, would enjoy after losing that scholar like that earlier. 
attack timings are really nice for Ramen though. Siege Engineering is also already done. Now he's adding in the spears, going for that tricomp that we talked about earlier. 18 archers out already, but if you're famous here, you see the ball of archers. I guess you... What do you do? You just add your own, is pretty much what I'm thinking. And you have to, it's happening. You have to, but another scholar goes down here for Raman on the retreat from that sacred site. And this is quite painful. I mean, you, you invest in a, in a third scholar, but you normally would as Deddy. You lose two of them just by the 10 minute mark. It's it's not a great spot to be in. Now, the decap is blocked by uh, Raman's scout here, not losing the gold income just yet, and his army is there to meet the cavalry of Demos there. Um, and yeah, as you mentioned, Spears on the way for Raman as well to answer this cavalry presence. And there's a decent timing on the right, you want them. But, uh, a little bit overzealous here by Demos, I think, to take this engagement here. I mean, he doesn't have that many knights. Four of them is nice, but there's so many archers here. Now, Spears here as well for Demos, losing uh, some crucial units here already. And, you know, th this is the problem w w with 2TC, right? Sure, you're scaling a larger economy, buying all this, but you have to be very careful in losing the few units that you have, especially if there's such expensive knights like this, because if you do so, you could find yourself severely outmassed right, quite soon afterwards. There's also the Delhi factor that uh, I always say that when you take one bad fight against Delhi, you can just see them snowball away. We do see the walls coming up on the top sacred side. Good choice. I mean, if you can close those off, it's going to be super comfortable for him. Famous though, going straight for the economy. We talked about it. Uh, Ramen needs to move out for the food, otherwise he's going to be in trouble. So he's going to be vulnerable there. Yes, Knights nice just finding a little bit of idle time on the back there in favor of Temus, forcing those Raman villages and Delhi villages inside of the tower. But judicious defense by Raman, rallying space there to defend and also having two towers up already there for the defense. But now melee upgrade Bloomery finishing up as well. It just seems like Raman forgot to queue up uh, the melee defense in the blacksmith. Oh, it is there now, but uh, uh, it was only in one blacksmith rather than actually despite having two. But now pressing forward. It was forward. the siege engineering. He did queue up. Wait, let's, let's not put the guy in the corner here. He was, he was fine on that. Interesting wall approach. I feel like he just felt he didn't need it. Yes, he wanted to secure that sacred side there for a sec, but the reality is he's going to have most of his army there. And, you know, with the siege engineering, as we mentioned, prioritized over the melee upgrades so early, it is exactly how we expected. And the ram is on the way now. Good thing Famos built that giant tower map hack there. He knows exactly what's coming for him. He also knows there's 32 archers on the map, and he has six. Yeah, that's right. And... This is where losing some of those units ready for Demos is going to really hurt him. And this TC positioning as well. Sure, the Kremlin is forward and protects the TC somewhat. It's just not going to do much to the Rams. And those archers are just going to be behind the Ram, completely safe from that Kremlin fire. And, you know, if it forces Demos in a difficult position, he will need units to defend this all in, uh, which costs food. But then he also will need the militia uh, to defend, which costs even more food. And whether he has enough food alongside having to drain villages uh, to drain from these two town centers uh, is something we'll have to wait and see. Now, wall does go up on the center for armor now. A lone knight moving in to those deer behind, but with such low amount of health, he does end up going down. They just jump on him and shank him dead. Now we see the gate coming up on the uh, central sacred site wall by Raman. Behind this, more Ghazis in queue, more Spears in queue, more Archers in queue, and we see him actively selling gold already, right? So yeah. there's likely going to be no Castle Age on the way here, selling gold as well as uh, purchasing additional scholars, yeah, right? Is Ramen getting a, bit, a little bit flustered here. That's a little blunder. They're out of position. The Ram is now also completely unprotected, but I'm still not sure if Fembos can take this fight without calling the boys. He's just going in there right now. The composition, though, is nice. Only three Ghazis here to hold off the flood of knights. The spears are moving in now, so Femma should theoristically just pull back. But yeah, the numbers just don't work out. Too little, too late. The pullback is so late by Temos, and he loses many knights and horsemen there on the front line. And even the archers are going to start going down here. And you look at the military count as we speak, far exceeding double here in favor of Raman. Raman well, just got briefly distracted there by a raid on, on his own wood line there behind that Temos uh, has sent, but that does get cleaned up in the end. 
But now, with all the three sacred sites locked in here for Delhi, you know, if he does opt to go for this all in, I think Demos will struggle to hold, quite frankly. Uh, the ram did end up going down, and I think he will need at least two to make this all in work. But I think he's instead going to opt to get all of these walls up around the sacred sites first so they don't get decapped, and he has a secondary win condition to fall back behind this because at the end of the day, he is still getting outscaled in terms of economy. Yeah, he's still going hard on the archers, and I love all of these forward walls with the gates and them just making a safe withdrawal area for himself. Demos just can't match the archer count, and if he was matching it, then those would still be regular archers facing up against the Tower of Victory. That's right, and uh, these walls are making life difficult for Demos, because at the end of the day, sure, he is the one skating to TC, but he has to keep this uh, army busy. However, on the back line of Demos in his wood line, uh, two guards were is causing quite a bit of havoc, and Demos doesn't realize this just yet. Three villages down, a fourth one now also dead. Another Ghazi enters in whilst on the back of this. He's also built two rams. Demos has to notice this. Uh, he's going to notice even more, but yeah, he did notice in the end. Right, he's opting for another big forge. That's a lot of resources every single time. 175. To be fair, currently he does have a 500 wood bank. But this is, this is a significant investment that might have been better spent into another production building because the flood is coming in two ramps this time and the army stays with the ramps. Yeah, decent amount of units here from Temos on the defense. 42 watches, 12 knights. That's a reasonable force. I feel like if he does manage to pick up all, but his guards is again on the back line, just idling out the entire wood economy for Temos here. Only three guards is uh, forcing seven knights to go back to respond to them on the back of this. The DC just gets abandoned. Yeah. Usually when I see a position like this, I tell myself, I should just ignore this giant tower there. But I guess if the army count is that much in favor of myself, I can just drop down one more ramp and just ship it. The boys are being called though, boys moving in straight into the Tower of Victory archers and not attacking but just moving. Yes, he does. Militia are called in here in a pinch by Demos on this defense. Now, he decides to engage right after the TC falls, which is a little, a little bit of a blunder, I would say. Nice, trying to find an angle to connect into the archers on the back line, but instead are the spearmen diligently moving forward to protect uh, those archers there. And overwhelm Demos is as the archers move forward to surround the archers from Rus as Delhi Sultanate looks to be in a winning position here. And GG is called by Demos as Raman takes the series 3-1. Well, Roos is overrated. Apparently we we so. know we know the truth. You know, I always I always thought Ramen was a swell guy. I really liked him, but then you, you heard that interview. He likes the Mali passive uh, income. I, 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 I don't know what to say now. He's coming in for his interview and like what do you say to a guy like that? Yeah, well, I mean, you know. We all have our opinions, don't we? If he likes that passive income, that's him. Personally, I don't mind so much. Uh, if it bothers you, I perfectly understand, right? Having to not do anything and getting resources behind it is uh, can be a bit of a touchy subject for a lot of people. Of course, it's not completely for free. You have to pay for those pit mines, and uh, they can be quite vulnerable, but we see here the graph and the military value lead. Once again, it skyrockets in favor of Raman, right? And we have seen, as we talked about before, and Askrad mentioned himself, one bad fight uh, is all it needs for Delhi.